this era of digitization with access to smartphones, smart TVs, tablets, iPad, one is flooded with information from all kinds of health apps, providing free health and dietary advice. However, it is critical that people are educated and sensitized towards the source of information. No one should blindly follow advice that are published by unknown sources as this may lead to severe health consequences. Keeping this in mind, this video will try to provide answers to the common diet and nutrition related myths. Myth 1. Eating low calorie diets for long and skipping meals is the only way to weight loss. We learned about the concept of balanced diet in our first module and we need to apply that here. It means each individual requires certain amount of calories and other nutrients depending on age, weight and activity. A body has to be in a balance. The intake should ideally be equal to the output. Thus, weight loss is about creating an energy deficit which in simpler terms means taking in lesser calories then your body expends each day. Severely limiting calories can make the body think it is caught in a famine and that it needs to do more with fewer calories. When a body starts to preserve calories instead of using them to ward off a famine situation, the diet can backfire and instead of losing weight, we can start gaining kilos. Ideally, one should not aim to reduce weight drastically but lose it slowly over a period of time. Scientifically, one should reduce 500 kcal per day in one's diet to reduce 500 gram in one month. Though it might not sound very encouraging, this is the ideal way to lose weight safely. Myth 2. Vegetarian diets are deficit in protein. We learned in earlier modules that we can get protein from both animal and plant sources. What is critical is not the source but the quality of protein. Although animal sources are of much superior quality, if vegetarian sources are well blended and matched, they can be of the same quality. Adequate protein needs can be easily attained through a well-planned diet. Plant-based protein typically contains more fiber and less saturated fat factors that are cornerstones of a heart healthy diet. There are many versatile plant-based sources of protein that fit into a healthy eating plan like legumes which is beans, lentils, peas, peanuts, soy products, whole grain, nuts, seeds and low fat or fat free dairy. Vegans should consume more proteins than their meat and dairy eating counterparts. That's because protein from whole grains and legumes has lower digestibility than animal protein. So, vegetarian diets are not deficient in protein. Rather, if planned well and included properly into the diet, they can be healthier. Myth 3. Spinach is a good source of iron. Dietary sources for iron include hame iron, which is found in animal foods, and non-hame iron, which is found in plants. The body absorbs hame iron better than non-hame. It is usually said that all green leafy vegetables are good sources of iron. But spinach is an exception to it. While spinach does contain some iron, for example, 100 grams of spinach has 2.9 mg of iron. It also contains a substance that binds to iron meaning it's not taken up by the body as well as the iron in other green vegetables or iron from animal foods. However, spinach is a good source of folic acid and other nutrients which contribute to good health. It's important to say that one should include a variety of both plant and animal foods to get the iron the body needs. Apart from this, try to add foods rich in vitamin C like lemon, amla and other citrus fruits to the diet to help the body absorb more non-hame iron easily. Myth 4. Fortified foods are impure or adulterated. Food fortification is the practice of deliberately increasing the content of essential micronutrients like vitamins, minerals including trace elements in a food 
so as to improve the nutritional quality of the food. The idea behind this is to provide a health benefit to people with minimal risk to health. In India, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has laid down standards for fortifying five food commodities, namely wheat flour, rice, salt, oil and milk with nutrients like iron, vitamin A, vitamin D and some other vital nutrients. This practice helps to make the food vehicle rich in a nutrient that it was deficient in. It is a common age-old practice in Western countries. For example, Switzerland has been fortifying salt with iodine since 1923 and USA since 1930. Therefore, fortification doesn't make the food impure or adulterated. Rather, it makes it more nutritious by adding the nutrients which the food was lacking in. Myth 5. Salt symbolizes purity and makes our food pure and protects us from infections. It is true that salt is an essential ingredient of food and enhances its taste. It is also used as a preservative and that is why it is added to pickles, chutneys, papads, commonly consumed in Indian households. Salt is a major source of sodium in our diet. Though sodium helps in maintaining the water balance in the body, excess of sodium, which primarily comes from salt, is associated with increased blood pressure. Further, an excess of sodium leads to greater calcium excretion from our body, thereby affecting our bone health. Therefore, one should not consume more than 5 grams of salt, that is 1 teaspoon per day. Myth 6. Newborns feel thirsty during the summer and hence should be given water. Newborns and infants below 6 months of age should only be given breast milk. Breast milk is the most natural and perfect food for normal growth and the healthy development of infants. The initial thick yellow milk called colostrum, which is secreted for the first 3-4 days after delivery, is rich in nutrients and has anti-infective factors which protect the baby from infections. Therefore, colostrum should not be discarded but fed to infants. Infants below 6 months of age should not be given water, honey or ghutti as it may predispose the infant to infections. A baby should be exclusively breastfed up to 6 months of age and complementary foods should be introduced thereafter. Breastfeeding can be continued as long as possible even up to 2 years of age. Myth 7. Oil provides empty calories with no nutrients. Fat has an important role to play in our body. Not only does it enhance the texture, taste and flavour of food, it also reduces gastric emptying and thereby affects satiety. One gram of fat provides us 9 kcal. Apart from providing calories, oil is also an important source of fatty acids, which are the building blocks of fats. Fats are of three types, saturated, monosaturated or MUFAs and polyunsaturated or PUFAs. Although the human body can synthesize MUFAs and saturated fatty acids, it cannot synthesize prime PUFAs and hence it has to be obtained from the diet. An important point to consider is, we should be able to have the right mix of different fats as part of our diet. For this, it is important to change our cooking oil at least once in a couple of months or use a different mix of oils to nourish our bodies with different fatty acids. The following combination of oils could be used. Groundnut and mustard, groundnut and rice bran, sunflower and mustard, sunflower and olive, safflower and rice bran. Thus, fat per se does not affect body weight. But because it increases the palatability of the diet, it may increase energy intake and risk of getting diet-related non-communicable diseases. The recommendation to prefer low-fat diets and avoid fatty foods as a way to lose body weight and prevent DRNCD should be replaced with advice on type of fat, which means one should consume 
or increase the proportion of good fats or PUFAs and MUFAs, limit or decrease the proportion of bad fats, especially saturated fats, and avoid or completely eliminate industrially produced trans fats or food additives. Of course, there has to be a focus on energy balance through physical activity. Myth 8. Diabetes and sugar go hand in hand. Half-baked knowledge is worse than ignorance, especially with regard to illnesses such as diabetes. A commonly held myth is that sugar causes diabetes. There are many factors contributing to diabetes, such as heredity, overweight or obesity, sedentary lifestyle. Another myth is that carbohydrate is a no-no for those afflicted with diabetes. Low carbohydrate diets are becoming more and more popular. Carbohydrates gives us energy and helps us perform various functions. It is not just about carbohydrates alone, but their quality and quantity that is important. Choosing fiber-rich foods like whole grain and pulses, limiting the use of refined carbs like maida and refined atta, and avoiding processed foods like cakes, chips, etc., and packed juices is the safe recommended path for diabetics. It is best to consume carbohydrates with proteins as they complement each other and help improve absorption. There is no need to say a complete no to sweets and desserts. We don't need to avoid sweets and desserts completely, but it is important to restrict portion size. No to fruits. In diabetes, all fruits are allowed, but fruits with a high glyceridic index such as bananas or mangoes can be taken in smaller portions. All fruits have fructose which eventually manage your sugar. Another myth is that diabetics should not exercise much. Routine physical exercise is a must for diabetics. It helps burn the extra fat, reduces stress, helps control sugar level and cholesterol and increases insulin sensitivity. The best advice for diabetics is that they should eat healthy, exercise and lead an overall healthy lifestyle to manage diabetes and live without problems. Myth 9. If a food label indicates diet foods, it is healthy. The food market is full of products claiming to be diet friendly. However, most of these food labels may not be the right claims. Labels claiming to be low fat may be high in sugar, salt and even fat. It is thus advisable to not to go by what the front pack of a food product reads, but read the ingredient list to find out any hidden sources of salt, sugar or fat. Look for a certification of FSSAI for correctness of the label and the claim. Myth 10. Blood pressure can be controlled by only stopping the use of salt. It is true that excessive salt intake worsens hypertension as the sodium in salt directly increases blood pressure. However, completely stopping table salt intake is not the only solution. There are many other sources of sodium. These include processed and packaged foods, canned fruits and vegetables, marine shellfishes, papers, pickles, etc. Thus, it is important to maintain salt intake within recommended levels and avoid or restrict other high sodium foods. Blood pressure reduction can be achieved with increasing vegetables and fruit intake and drastically cutting down high salt foods. Regular walks and physical activity also helps in lowering blood pressure. It is a silent killer, so must be monitored and medically supervised.